for one brown alpair, female willow and male ghost. The new breeding season starts earlier than normal. It's the middle of December and just one month since they're young, ginger, cinnamon and clove fledged from sycamore stump. But willow's back in the nest and looking surprisingly broody. Soon I see Willow chasing her owlets away. She wants to encourage them to find their own territories. Ginger's quickly chased out of Barn Owl Tower. This is normal behaviour for Barn Owl families. Willow is spending more time in the nest. She begins nest scraping and the pair are constantly allopreening and mating. But it's the middle of winter and surely too early to be expecting eggs which are normally laid in early spring. But perhaps it's because of last year, kestrels raised chicks in this nest. Willow wanted to nest here herself and waited patiently until July, when the young kestrels fledged, before raising her own chicks there. I think this year she just wants to get in there first. and she defends this nest from prospecting intruders. Be it another barn owl, or the kestrel pair that got in first last year, Mr. and Mrs. Kez. She doesn't want to wait for this nest site again. That night, Ghost delivers food to Willow. He's proven he can provide for her and their future chicks. Which is another indication Willow might lay an egg soon. But I can't believe it, it's still the middle of winter. If the food source is there, barn owls have been documented to lay in any month of the year, but they usually hold off until spring. On the 19th of January, the Kestrels return to Sycamore again. Willow lets them know this nest site is taken. And later that day, as if to confirm the fact, She lays her first egg. It's the middle of January, I can't believe my eyes. I don't think Willow can believe it either. When Ghost arrives later that night with a small morsel, Willow reminds him of his responsibilities. She clearly isn't happy. Female barn owls start incubating as soon as the first egg is laid. So she's relying on ghosts to hunt for her and keep her well fed. Luckily, he's quick to return with a mouse, which instantly changes her mood. Last time, Ghost didn't provide enough food for them and Willow had to do most of the work. I don't think she'll want this to happen again.
Brown owls lay their eggs two to three days apart. And on the 21st of January, Willow stands, revealing her second egg. Ghost is quick to bring food. And there's more deliveries too, which is so good to see. Later he returns to the nest when Willow's out and looks down at the two eggs almost tenderly. Three days later, the third and final egg is laid. She'll spend the next 30 days incubating. I can't wait to watch this story unfold. It's the start of February and Willow's incubating three eggs around the clock. It's the male, Ghost Roll, to provide a food and he's doing a great job. But the weather soon takes a turn. Just five days before the first eggs due to hatch. Strong winds, heavy rain, and snowstorms sweep across the country. Thankfully, it doesn't stop this determined barn owl pair. Willow continues to incubate as winds howl through the nest. And Ghost looks to be struggling too. Returning to the nest with food is no easy task. Willow normally leaves the nest a couple of times a day. But she thinks twice about it in these conditions. The worst thing is, there's no sign of this weather easing off. That night when Willow stands, her eggs cracked open. She removes her shell. And soon, I catch a glimpse of Skye, her first chick. Only a few hours pass. Willow is already feeding Sky. Its eyes are shut and it can barely sit upright, but it's already eating small morsels delivered carefully by Willow. And just listen to that wind. Barn owl eggs don't hatch all at once. They hatch in two to three day intervals in the order they were laid. This is known as asynchronous hatching. So two days later, I notice a pip in the second egg. This is the first stage of hatching. The pip turns into a crack. And then finally, a chick emerges. This one's called Spirit.
The third chick arrives three days later. This is Echo, and with its arrival, the family is now complete. There's five days between the eldest and the youngest, and the eldest is already twice its size. All of Willow's chicks need feeding regularly if they're going to make it to fledging. Willow ties pieces of voles, mice and shrews to carefully feed her young. And with Ghost providing constant food deliveries, these three chicks will waste no time in developing. But it's tiring work. The eldest chick, Skye, is 11 days old. She's starting to open her eyes and is already sitting up. Although she's much larger than her siblings, she can't quite manage swallowing larger pieces by herself. All three are still relying on Willow to feed them. As the warmer spring weather starts to arrive, the sky is getting too big to brood. It's great watching her take her first steps exploring the nest. While the others are safely tucked away. A few days later, Skye's still trying to master the art of swallowing large pieces of food. With a little bit of encouragement, She finally manages it. This mother and daughter pair seem to have grown quite fond of each other. Despite the size difference, all three chicks are looking healthy. The youngest, Echo, is even starting to sit up, which is great to see. From a stormy start in life, to thriving under the expert parental care, I can't wait to see these chicks grow strong. Sky, the eldest chick, is now 22 days old. You can see her facial disc is slowly developing and she's just starting to look around the nest. The middle chick, Spirit, is 20 days old and youngest, Echo, is just 17 days old. These smaller owlets still rely on Willow for warmth. But only a few days later, it starts getting cramped in a sycamore nest. Willow is finding it hard to brood the rapidly growing chicks. On warm days, she ventures to the entrance and stands guard instead, while the chicks huddle together. But when the sun starts to set and the temperatures cool, she heads back into the nest to care for her young owlets. There's quite a size difference between the three chicks. These older siblings are noticeably larger and more advanced. The 
and seem to like taking the limelight. Practicing head bobbing and stretching. Great signs they're developing well. The next evening, while Willow is in the entrance, Sky starts to look around. Spirit stands and stretches, which is great to see. But Echo just wants to cuddle up with his siblings to keep warm. One of the reasons these chicks are looking so strong is because Ghost is doing such a fantastic job. Youngest Echo manages to get hold of this one. And eventually swallows it down whole. Barn owls take great care in keeping their feathers clean, but sharing a nest with three barn owl chicks can leave Willow's feathers in a mess. She bathes regularly to keep them clean. She certainly seems to enjoy it, particularly as the weather is so warm. The chicks are getting hot too, but they simply lay down on a mess floor to cool off. The following day it's hot again. Willow tries to shuffle in the nest, but the chicks are just too big. Her role of looking after the young in the nest is now over. So she decides to leave in the middle of the day. And the older two owlets seem to be looking after the youngest. Although Willow's no longer sharing a nest with her three chicks. She's still nearby, keeping a close eye on them. Now there's more space in the nest, they've become a lot more active. Moving around the nest, stretching and growing in confidence. And I can see the start of their flight feathers coming through too. Sky even takes a peek at the outside world. A huge milestone for this young barn owl. Willow and Ghost are providing lots of food for their owlets. Thankfully, natural prey seems abundant. And some nights they've been making more than 20 food deliveries. All three chicks are now standing up regularly. And the fringing on their facial discs is becoming prominent too. Then the weather takes an unseasonable turn. Heavy rain turns to snow, which covers the landscape. I worry about these chicks out there alone. But they look after each other and seem to manage just fine. Echoes preening as usual. You can see the waxy cuticles on the pin feathers fall into the floor. This allows the flight feathers to come through. It's amazing to see such a strong bond between the chicks. The 
But when it comes to food, competition arises. That night when Sky's eating a vole, Spirit watches on, biding her time. Before making a move, without success. Thankfully, Willow and Ghost are providing enough to go around, and they deliver whatever they can. Even this very unlucky toad. Sky's been spending a lot of time in the entrance. It's not long until Spirit joins her, taking in the world around them. This leaves Echo with plenty of space inside to have a proper stretch. And on the 4th of March, Echo finally joins them. At this age, I can start to work out what sex they are. I'm thinking Sky is a female. She has darker markings around her facial disc. Spirit's a male. He has much paler fringing. Echo's showing signs of being a female, but it's still too early to tell. Over the last month, these owlets have gone from small chicks, constantly watched by their mother, to strong and healthy owlets, full of character and almost ready to fledge. Barn owlets, Sky, Spirit and Echo are around seven weeks old and thriving. The eldest two chicks, Sky and Spirit, are nearly ready to fledge. Echo is five days younger and is less advanced than the siblings. And now the others are occupied, she has more space in the nest to explore and hone some essential skills. Like head bobbing, which is how barn owls identify objects. And pouncing which this barn owl will need to survive outside the nest. Eldest sibling Sky soon comes back inside. You can see her down has been replaced by new flight feathers. I don't think it'll be long before she fledges. Parents Willow and Ghost only return at night to feed them. So the chicks are left completely alone during the day. It's great to see Sky and Spirit taking care of younger sibling Echo. By the 13th of April, these owl chicks are growing restless and are now more interested in the outside world, which makes this the perfect time to get set up in my hide. That's amazing, both Sky and Echo are in the entrance. When you see them like this, you can really see the age difference in between them. Sky is five days older than Echo, and it really shows here. I love being able to watch them this close from my hide. Look how inquisitive they are. This one's watching a fly. Another fly's flown into it. It's getting late, so I'm gonna leave them to it now. That night, Sky flies from the nest for the very first time. But she doesn't go far.
after jumping around outside and exploring. She's soon back in the nest. Barn owl chicks usually return to the nest once they're fledged, to be fed by the parents. Which is a good thing, as tomorrow they're getting their identification rings. So today's a really exciting day, it's ringing day for the owlets up in Sycamore Stump. They're already seven weeks old, so I'm going to head in and get them out. So there's the first owlet, absolutely beautiful. So with the chicks being a bit bigger this time when we're ringing them, I'm just going to separate them off. Just put them in this bag. All right then, Jean, we've got some uh, lovely healthy owlets here. So this is uh, the middle chick. Spirit, is it? This one? Spirit, yes. Spirit. No, I don't. Oh, well grown, they weren't long for the fledge, were they? I know, yeah. They're doing really well. There's a few tiny yeah. little sparkles there. Mm -hmm. But when we see the, uh, the next two, they're very dark. So the bag weighs 55 grams. All right then. Alright, I'm letting go. So it's 500 on here, so that's 55 off, so four. Four, five. five. Yeah. <laughs> at the moment, I think he's a male looking at the others. He's got very few sparkles here. There's a little bit of colour yeah, here, but, bit, but wait, not, wait until you see the other two. <laughs> yeah, they're really coloured. Do it one handed with professional. <laughs> there we go. When you see these two together. Oh, God, I. Yeah. <laughs> so very much a female, this one. Yeah. Mistaken, isn't yeah. It? For them sparkles up there. And with them being out of the same clutch, yeah. uh, yeah. she produces quite dark chicks. Yeah, lovely dark face, aren't you? Yeah, so I'll pop this one away. This ring is individual to this bird, so if it ever turns up again, we'll know. Yes, yeah, so these are all registered with the BTO, British Trust for Ornithology, and uh, we're making notes of all of the sizes, the weights, uh, and the ring numbers here of these owls. All right. Very love. Yeah, let's get away in. Yes, yeah, so this one weighs four or five, so that's a good way to do well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is Skye, and she's a female, and you can see she's a female because of all these really beautiful speckles under her wings and on her breast here, but this really dark facial trim as well. So when barn owls are hunting, the legs are actually perfectly positioned, so when they're going and grasp their voles or the mice, that they don't actually end up catching their own feet too much, so they fit perfectly together this way, but then have quite a spread to be able to catch the... Uh, rodents, so it's always amazing to put the feet together, it's like pieces of a jigsaw. Now, this is the bigger one, that's a bit... We are still a bit fluffy, aren't you? Still got lots of fluff. Yes, yeah, so this is the last chick, and uh, if we just look at the sex again, because everyone's very excited to see what we've got here. And we're going female again, aren't we, Jean, do you think? Yeah, I would say Yeah, too. we've got all these little sparkles under, these little markings under the wing and coming through on the breast. This is uh, the age you can start to sort of tell. This is all baby. So this is the youngest chick that we've got here and this one's Echo. All right, another way in. So we've got this owl that we're weighing in at 4.30, so that's a really good weight, isn't it, for, weight, yeah. for a young owl. So we've got them all lined up, we've got Spirit here, and we've got Sky here, and Echo here. So these two in the end here are females, 
and this one's a male, a beautiful male with lovely markings. All right, I'm just going to pop them back in the bag and get them back in the nest. So that's been fabulous to get the rings on these owls. They've all got individual numbers and we're going to get them back in the nest box now. So that's got the owlets all safely back in the nest and they're going to be fledging in the next week. These three barn owl chicks, Sky, Spirit and Echo, are now eight weeks old. Eldest Sky has already fledged the nest. And I don't think it'll be long until the others fledge too. While the chicks rest in Sycamore Nest, Mr. and Mrs. Kes, the resident kestrel pair, fly onto a nearby branch and start displaying courtship behavior. Perhaps they don't realise this nest is still taken. Willow, the female, arrives out of nowhere and lets them know this nest site is out of bounds. It's reassuring to know she's still close by, keeping an eye on her outlets. The following evening, whilst youngest owlet Echo sleeps happily inside, her older siblings, Sky and Spirit, are back out in the entrance again. Sky climbs to the top of the nest. An echo wakes from her sleep to see what all the fuss is about. Spirit, as if buoyed on by an audience, climbs out too, to join Sky. His first taste of the outside world. But he doesn't go far, exploring the platform beneath the nest. And when he sees Parent Owl Ghost delivering food to Echo, he's quick to return. Thankfully, there's plenty of food to go around. Sky returns to the nest after a few hours and catches up with fellow fledgling spirit. They get some well earned rest, it's obviously been a tiring day. As Echo watches the outside world, I wonder when she'll finally jump. Over the next few days, the eldest two chicks come and go as they please. Echo watches on night after night as her siblings explore around the nest. And soon Sky starts to explore further afield. makes her way to the feeding post for the very first time. Mother Owl Willow arrives and Skye's quick to greet her. The 
before taking some food back to her youngest chick. It's been 11 days since Sky fledged the nest. And this is the first time she's arrived carrying prey. I wonder if this could be a first successful hunt. Echo seems impressed. The next morning around 4 a.m. Sky sets off and is swiftly followed by Spirit. Echo's left alone at a nest entrance. She hesitates and goes to return back to the nest. Then plucks up the courage and jumps to the top of the nest entrance. And just like that, this nest is empty for the first time in months. But not for long. Sky and Spirit return after a night of exploring. But Echo is nowhere to be seen. There's no sign of her for the rest of the day and I'm starting to worry. But as night falls, Echo flies back to the nest. A whole day in the wild. But these three owlets are still only youngsters. And everything seems to interest them. Over the next few weeks, all three chicks use sycamore as a base. And it's clear they're thriving. They leave the nest to hunt and explore at night. and I'm seeing them regularly at the feeding post. And a month later, I catch a glimpse of all three owls together. It's amazing to see them in their full adult plumage. This has been one of my favourite nests to follow. Willow and Ghost have defied the odds by laying their eggs in the depths of winter, raising their chicks through tough storms, protecting them from intruders, and providing more than enough food to go around. Willow and Ghost really are incredible owl parents. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to see more. Here's a taste of what you'll enjoy seeing on this channel.